Now, when we're talking the tape with OMAC, mm. you, you briefly mentioned there was a lot of drinking going on back then. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, tell us a little bit about that because I remember once seeing online that um, something about you announcing that you quit drinking yeah. or something like that. Um, but at that stage, I wasn't as familiar with your music and, and everything. Right, yeah. So tell us a little bit about, you know, your whole battle with, with drinking. Yeah, right. So, um, yeah. I don't know the real reason why it's why it happened, but I had a big breakup and just started drinking heavily to the point where it became a huge problem. I don't know how it got that hectic, but you know, a lot of proper craving it and shit. And back then, yeah, I was constantly drinking just to deal with that shit, and that took a couple of years. And um, but then yeah, when I enough was enough at one stage, and I went sober for a year, and then um. Fucking had a bit of a relapse, and it's really just it is what it is, man. Like I'll go a few months sober, then a, f- a few months back back on the piss, mm. and it's just a yeah on- ongoing battle. And you know you can obviously hear it in the music, like Jordan and lots of tracks that I do release are about addiction, and yeah, it's pretty shit. But you know, I think I think in the future I will be able to you know, control it and kind of get through it. Now, I, I'm I'm a drinker, but not a big drinker. So, like, I'll drink at my club gigs on Friday and Saturday, but then I don't really drink throughout the week. Yeah. Um, I think when I was younger, you know, I might have started having a few beers here and there when I was, like, 14 or some shit. Mm. Was that, you know, you're sort of the same, like, as a kid, um, dabbling in the beers and shit? Man, but... Before I was like 14, I was like, yeah, dabbling in the drugs a lot. And yeah, we were drinking heaps. But I wasn't really addicted to anything. But then I got real sick when I was 14. It was actually a night after I had, you know, fucking drank a shitload and smoked a lot of weed. And I had like my first panic attack. And then an ambulance came, took me to hospital and all that. And then after that, they kept coming. And I ended up getting diagnosed with panic disorder. There was like a good year when I was about 14 where I could hardly leave the house. And that's actually when I really started writing and, you know, practicing my craft because I wasn't doing anything else. I couldn't really go out and see mates or go to parties and that because I was really fucked up in the head. And, I'd, you know, I'd leave the house and I'd start vomiting just from panic. It was fucked up. But over the years, I've learned to deal with it more because I've gotten used to it mm. to an extent where, you know, fuck, it's like 10 years ago when I was diagnosed and now it's just like a part of who I am. It's hard to imagine myself without feeling panicky. It's weird. Yeah, wow. So when you perform, do you get, you know, a heightened sense of that panic? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, last night I had an eight-mile moment in the t- in the toilet before we fucking got up. But once the beat drops, I'm usually, you know, too focused on that. And I've learned, you know, little techniques to deal with it. But in saying that, I think the drinking has a lot, has it ties into that. Because mm-hmm. when I'm drinking, obviously it kind of, makes me feel a bit more normal and I, uh, you know i can notice that and i admit that but it's not you know it's not healthy mm. and you know me and sev were talking about it earlier where it's like it's weird he's like it's hard to understand that you can't just have one drink you know like he's able to have one drink and it's just like he'll have a pepsi and it's yeah that's cool i can just have one beer with the big problem with me is like i'll have one and then i gotta have a carton i can't just stop at one it's annoying. <laughs> yeah. You know, it is what it is. Now, someone, um, you know, like I said, who doesn't drink regularly, so to speak, you know, I know what hangovers are like and shit, but I think alcoholism is something that there's such a strong focus on illegal, uh, like addiction to illegal mm. drugs that sometimes I feel people don't really realize or understand like how hardcore alcoholism oh, for sure, man. is. Um and I don't know, man, for me, it's just like I've just seen it depicted in movies and then meeting a couple of people and mm. just, it's just looks, you know, fucking hardcore and like a very difficult yeah. thing to get out of. I mean, you know, as, as someone who has battled with that or someone is still battling with that, mm. um, you know, what are, what are some of the most negative, you know, things that you see come of that? I think a big problem is that 
yeah, well, growing up, we don't see alcohol as a hardcore drug. We see it as the norm in um, Australia. Mm. Drinking culture is just part of Australia. Yeah, the beer drinking. Yeah. So we don't yeah. really see it as something that could affect us like that until it really happens. You know? Like, before I was really addicted, I'd, you know, I would probably go, how the fuck are people addicted to alcohol? Taste shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know, man. It is weird. It's, you know, same with cigarettes. Like, fuck. Because it's legal, we kind of got this false sense of security where we don't think it can affect us because it's on the shelves. <laughs> but it's just as bad as half the shit that's illegal. Mm. And, like, when you when you struggling with that is it a when you wake up every morning is it you know you're throwing up and when i'm going through withdrawals and that yeah yeah well when i when i do get sober i'm usually um medicated it's like called camprow it's just so i don't get seizures or anything mm. like well that was like a big worry when i first got sober that so they put me on that and i've tried other stuff like ant abuse it's called you have it and if you have any alcohol you get violently ill and have to go to hospital and that yeah and that I couldn't use deodorant and stuff because of it. Yeah, right. So I hated that, so I got got off that. So I'd rather just do it with no medication, to be honest. But yeah, right. The Cambrow stuff does help with the cravings when you first get off. And you mentioned like you know, going through a breakup mm. is what really sort of triggered it. Yeah. So what, were you sort of drinking I was a pussy beer? whips, man? <laughs> hey, man, I think we've all been there oh, once in up. our life, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think I've been there before. Yeah, I feel you. But, I mean, yeah, so w why is it that when that happened that it was the liquor that you turned to as opposed to maybe whatever else is out there? Right, because, um, yeah, with the whole panic disorder stuff, it's it's funny, like, mentally, I can't really handle other drugs. Like, even even weed, I, I have a cone and I'll be fucking ruined. Mm. Like, over-paranoid. It, it just doesn't agree with me. Where booze, it seems to be the only thing that kind of does. Like, it won't send me, uh, well, fuck, it does these days <laughs> send me a bit loopy, but, you know, not not panicky, though. The other shit will make me paranoid and just have to stay inside for days. Mm. Where I have, it sucks, though, because I do get drunk, and then when I'm that drunk, I'll go, oh, yeah, give me fucking whatever. But, yeah, I just, I don't really mess with other drugs. And then, so what is it, did you have a particular moment that made you sort of be like, okay, I really need to snap the fuck out of this. Yeah, well, fuck, I was probably about to lose my missus that I have now just because I'm really just not a fucking good guy on the piss. I'm not, you know, abusive or anything. I'm just an arsehole and I don't do anything, <laughs> not productive. And, you know, it was kind of upsetting seeing her kind of waste her life watching me. And, then, you know, even when I do drink now, I fucking feel bad for it, but... Uh, I felt like she was definitely going to leave and I wouldn't have blamed her. But I, that's when it was like, like it, I'm going to stop. And, yeah, wow. Yeah, and then stop for a year. And then, because it was the first time I stopped, I thought, all right, we'll try a drink and not be fucking overboard on it. Just have a couple. First night, yeah, just had a couple. Second night, a couple. Then, obviously, it turned back into it how, how it always is. Just me blacked out, fucking doing dumb shit, you know? And then, so where do you feel you're at with it now? Um, well, man, I went on, like, after the mixtape, I went on holiday to Asia, and I was like, fucking, uh, I'm going to have to drink. <laughs> it's like, it's too, it's too hard not to over there, man. So at the moment, I feel all right. I'm, like, really excited to just get the album out. So once I get back to Perth, I'm just going to fucking put my mind on that and push the booze aside and do mm. what i got to do. The, the, the lesson. Oh, yeah.